Hi, this is Mike Hibbert. I'm back with another Python tutorial for you. Um, we had a request, so the request was all about how do we do database type stuff. So here we are. I've created a database um, called Test. It's a MySQL database, um, but you can use very similar principles with something like the SQLite database system as well and various other databases work very very similarly so you should be able to use what you learn here in other ways right so I've created this test database I've got a test table and in there I've got three columns in the table the ID of the record the name and age of a person all right so we've created this database what we're going to do with it well we're going to cover importing the database module which is a very simple one-liner then we're going to create a class so we can build on the exp on the last video that I did in creating classes because classes help us to to write code that's reusable in lots of different situations and we're going to create a bit a database class that they can actually do all the setup um, to actually get the database up and running and then allow us to send queries and then finally when it's when it's destroyed or destructed um, it will close the database connections and, and clear up all the the mess after we're finished and then finally after that we're going to do some queries and then we're going to have a look inside of the variables and debug the results to make sure that we're getting what we what we need and to generally see what the structure of what the information that the database returns to python so here's our script so the first thing we're going to do is import python and start our database class so the first line is import my sql mysql db now, if you haven't got this um, and you need to install the modules, what you can do if you're in Ubuntu, for instance, is you can go into your package manager and if you look for Python hyphen MySQL DB, you should be able to select that as a package and install it. And if you're running on Windows or Mac or anything like that, you should be able to go to the, the on the internet and download an installable installable module that way. So once you've got that installed, you just simply type import MySQL DB. Then we're going to start off a class called database. We're going to give it a member variable called host and set that to local host because we're going to be querying the database which is up on my local machine. User is test user, which I've already set up in MySQL password is test pass and the database name that we're going to use is test so if you have multiple databases inside of MySQL this basically says use that specific database now we'll create a constructor and this constructor literally just builds us a connection to MySQL Now, the connection is basically um, a resource that we allocate so that we have one connection or one way of talking to the MySQL database from Python. Now, all programs have to ask for a connection because MySQL has um, a, a number of connections ready and available, but it, it may not have enough to cope with every request from every program that ever asks MySQL for a connection. So it's up to the program to initiate the process and at the same time we obviously want security measures in there so you have to supply, supply a username and password as well um, just so that if you have a database that's available through the internet then not any Tom, Dick or Harry can just connect to it and start pulling your data out right the next function member function that we're going to do is the, the one called query now this is the thing that's actually going to run our SQL commands now firstly it creates a cursor 
a database cursor basically is the thing we use to go and query records in the database and scan over and find matches or do inserting or updating of the records and in this case we're going to ask it for a, a dict cursor now the reason why we want a dict cursor is because we want our results to be in a nice easy accessible format so that we can literally use the, the return variables and use the key names of the t of the column names in the database as a way of getting the information out and I'll show you what that means later on because that might sound a bit confusing so we create a cursor we execute the queue variable which should be containing some SQL and then we return all the results from that query so fetch all you can do something called fetch one which will just bring the first one back but we want every single match from that query to be returned if it's a select query if it's an insert query or an update query we don't really care about the return values but if the, if we if this query was a select one we want the return values to come back and we want the whole lot of them now the last bit is something that I didn't cover in our last um, tutorial which is basically how to destroy a class so what happens when you finish using it when it gets deleted out of the system we can define the behavior by using this del function name which is a built-in reserved function name as is init which is basically our constructor's name del basically says what happens when this variable or this class instance is deleted well in this situation we want our connection to get closed because as you remember I mentioned that MySQL has a certain amount of connections that it would allow programs to connect on until it until it says enough so once we finished with our connection we want to tell MySQL that our connection is now free so we send the close command to MySQL and that says right we're finished you can have that connection back for another program attempting to connect okay so that's our class now what we're going to do with it we're going to basically insert a few records into there and we're going to then do some queries or a query just to say give me some information back now the first thing we do to use our new class is obviously to create a variable that contains a new instance of the t of the class database the next thing we do is we're going to write a little bit of a cleanup function which basically says if there's anything in this test table delete it so that's that's basically my sql sql there so delete from test table so delete everything out of the test table we use our db.query function that we defined above here and pass in our SQL, our query and that should go away and delete everything out of there just to keep it clean so that we can test our results and know that we're getting the right results back the next bit is a bit more complicated so if you're not in MySQL then I suggest you get yourself a good book on it because it's important that you know this if you're going to get into databases our query is insert into the test table in these column names name and age the following values Mike 39 Michael 21 Angela 21 now notice the age is there because that's quite important it's the next select query that we're going to do later is going to take advantage of those those matching values so we run that query and that inserts three records into the database next we do our select now we select everything from test table where the age is equals 21 so here's the match here so we should in theory only get Michael and Angela but no Mike back in our results 
So we do that and we assign that to a variable called people because we should have more than one person. And then we do a for loop. Now in Python we put what the variable, the singular part of this this list of people will be into the first part. So for person in the list of people we do the following print found our string placemaker placeholder that we've used throughout the other tutorials the indicator to say the following variables will be placed into those placeholders and in this case we're not putting brackets because we've only got one variable here in the previous ones we, we had brackets around this because we had two variables and sometimes three but in this case we're just going to say one variable the person in the list or the dict rather where the key is name now you notice remember in our class up here we said use a dict cursor this is why we use a dict cursor because then instead of having to write something like that position in the list which is zero or that position in the list and not really know what that could be we say we want the name column so that's easy to access and easy to understand okay so that's our database code now what we're going to do we're going to run it see what happens so debug so out of the database the people who have the age of 21 came out as michael and angela but no mike which is what we expected because mike's 39. so let's have a quick look inside of what that actually returns we're going to set a breakpoint on this for loop and press the debug. Now you'll notice the stack data area here gives you a list of what's actually in there. So, what did it return? This returned a tuple, and the tuple is filled with two dicts. And the dicts are filled with keys for age, ID and name. Age 21 and name Michael. So when we loop over this, so step over the current execution point, we now have a new person created, which is just basically taken out of this list and put into a variable of its own. which we can then key by these words rather than having to use indices. So this is a pretty basic example of how to do database programming, but it's the first steps to getting you into what you need to do and what you need to understand about what, what needs to be happening. So you have to set up, obviously, in this case we use the class because from now on we don't have to think about writing this code anymore we can literally just go ahead and start saying I want a database here's my query run it in the case of a select one a select query we can go here's my query run it and give me the results and then we just have to think about processing the results Right, so that's the end of this tutorial. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any more suggestions or ideas for tutorials that you'd like to see me do for you, uh, any questions about this tutorial, um, please feel free to leave a comment in the box below. Um, if you like this video, please press the like button. And if you want to see more of these tutorials when they come out, please subscribe to this channel.